thing is working, so let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and let me know if you can see me and hear me okay. Make sure you can hear my guitar okay. Okay, play a little bit of a backing track, make sure you can hear that okay. Okay, so let me know if you can see me, hear me, everything looks okay. Um, Derek is actually on this as well, so he's going to be able to answer any questions that you might have in the chat. So let me start off by saying thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. This is awesome that you're here. Uh, I always love to get together, talk about guitar, see if there's some things that I can do to help you on your guitar journey. Now, today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about triads and what they are and how we can use them in both our rhythm and in our lead playing. So, and we're doing this to celebrate the launch of a new course that I just did, which is Fretboard Framework. Now, Fretboard Framework, the whole point is, is to learn how not to just think about the logistics of, well, these chords are in this scale or in this mode or in this whatever, in this key, and then apply that scale to the fretboard and really not be able to make it sound like an actual solo or getting bored playing the same old chords all the time the same way. So that's really what we're trying to focus on is how can we change those things and make it more interesting for you, okay? So if any of this sounds interesting uh, to you as we go through here, there's going to be a button, I'm looking at my notes over there that, that Derek gave me, there's gonna be a button somewhere on your screen or a link or something that you can click on to check out Fretboard Framework and see if it's something that you're interested in, okay? so. Check that out. See if it's something that you like. So let's go ahead and get started. Hopefully you have a guitar with you because that'll make things a little bit easier. I don't know if there's going to be a replay of this webinar. Derek, maybe you can throw in the chat that if there is or isn't going to be a replay of this. And I do want to let everybody know, including Derek, I don't know if this is possible, but I actually have a backing track that I made just before uh, we, we uh, got together here. And I want to give that to you if possible. I don't know if it is possible, but if I could give you that backing track and then you can use that afterwards. So that would be cool. So thank you, Derek, for everything that you do for Guitar Zoom and certainly everything you do for me. He's always helping me out with stuff, which is just great. So it says here, there's a webinar discount and bonuses. So click the button. Okay, so yeah, that's awesome to know. There's a webinar discount uh, for being here today and there's some bonuses, which is cool. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started a little bit. Now, if I start talking a little bit over your head, do not panic. All of this stuff is covered in the guitar course. And, um, and the other thing is, is that'll give you food for thought of things that you might want to continue studying, right? If you don't really understand something that I say, you might want to make a note of that and go, hey, I need to come back to that and think about what that is. So basically, let's start with just the basics. What is an arpeggio? Well, an arpeggio, the, the term arpeggio means broken chord. And all we're doing is we're taking a chord like E and we're playing it broken apart, or D. So if you think of like... Um, you know, that kind of thing. It's kind of arpeggiated, but an arpeggio goes further than that. And so, without getting way too complex, the thing you have to understand about a chords that you play, like E or G or D or C or A or any of those things, as a guitar player, sometimes we're playing six strings, sometimes we're playing five strings, sometimes we're playing four strings. But the truth is, when we do that, we're really only playing three different notes. We're just playing multiple strings that utilize those same three notes. Now, we're talking about straight major or minor chords here. E major or E minor, D major or D minor. We're not talking about a minor seventh or a ninth or an 11th or 13th. That stuff gets more complicating as we go. And that's great to learn all that, but you need to start at square one before you worry about square 13, right? So the, the most important thing to understand here, if I make this E chord, for instance, what I'm doing is playing the notes E, and then on this string, I'm playing B, on this string, I'm playing E again, this string, I'm playing G sharp, and then B again, and then E yet again. I have three E's in there. So if you think about it, if you summarize all of those notes that I just played, I'm only playing E, G sharp, and B. That's all I'm playing. I'm playing six strings, and I'm playing those same three notes in what we call octaves. There's an E, there's an E, there's an E. Here's a B, here's a B. So 
as a guitar player, because we have the capability of playing six strings, we can play multiple octaves of those notes, but we're still only playing three notes, which used to confuse me when I was younger because I was like, no, I'm playing six notes. And my teacher's like, no, you're not. You're playing three notes. You're playing six strings. You know, you're playing octaves of notes, but you're not playing six different notes. C would be the same thing, okay? Here we have C, E, G, C, E, okay? They all work like that. And again, we're talking about regular major and minor chords, not sevenths or ninths or adds or, you know, susses, or we're just playing major and minor chords. That's all we're dealing with right now, okay? And that's enough, believe me. So once we understand that, okay, so in a theoretical term, what we're doing is if I was to be, for instance, let's play C, which has no sharps and flats, okay? So the notes of a C major scale would be C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. And it's okay if you don't know that, but that's what it would be. C, D, E, F, G, A, and B, seven different notes, and then C, the eighth note being the octave. That's what we're doing, okay? When we play triads, what we're doing is we're playing the first note, the third note, and the fifth note of the scale. So if I'm playing a C chord, I'm playing C, D, E, F, G, C, E, and G, which I just showed you, C, E, G, C, E. So again, the theory goes a little bit deeper and I don't wanna get take you know too far in the weeds with this, but understand that now you understand the terminology. When people say root, third, fifth, what they're talking about is a regular chord, D or E or A. They're all built on a triad, three notes, tri, three notes, called the root, the third, and the fifth. So if you think about an E chord, for instance, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. E, F, G, B, E, G, B. Now in reality, we get a G sharp because we're in a major key. And again, that's all theory and we gotta get into that. But the notes are E and G sharp and B, root, third, fifth. You know, it's not E, F or E, A or something. It's root, third, fifth. The first note, the third note, and the fifth note. That's what it is. So what I wanna do here is I wanna start off by just showing you some really fun things that you can do with this idea in just a chordal sense, okay? Now, if I said to you E, for instance, you might think of this E. Uh, maybe you think of the fifth string bar chord E or the sixth string bar chord E or whatever it might be. Or maybe you have other things that you know. Maybe you know your cage system, which is great. That would give you a head start on this stuff for sure. But let's just start off by thinking about this a little bit. So. What I like to do, if I think about a triad and I think to myself, like let's say I'm playing with another guitar player and that guitar player is playing open chords. So let's say we're building a chord progression, which is gonna be our chord progression of today that I've got a track for here. It's gonna be E to D to A and then back to E. That's how my song goes, is E, D, A, E. That's what I'm doing. That's what I'm gonna be playing. Okay, so maybe I'm playing with another guitar player and that guitar player is playing those chords, those open chords, okay? He or she is playing that. And I gotta think of something else that I'd like to do, okay? So what I do is I start thinking about different places that I can go on my guitar to build some arpeggios and play something different. So remember, we're talking about the root, third, fifth, the first, third, and fifth notes of whatever scale we're gonna be in, okay? And we're not gonna deal with scales in that right now. We'll get into that. So what I do is, let's say I'm on E, so I wanna find an E somewhere on the guitar. So I go up to the seventh fret, right there, okay? And I know I can build a fifth string bar chord right there, which is already pretty cool. But let's look at what's actually happening with that bar chord and let's try and build some chords here. So I've got E, if I think about it, I had E, G sharp, and B. Remember that when we were down here? We were playing E, G sharp, and B. So what I wanna do is I wanna build that some way on the guitar, and I'm gonna show you how I do this in Fretboard Framework. I always like to show people three different ways to approach your arpeggios. One is to the left of the chord, over the chord, and to the right of the chord. And our chord in this case is the fifth string bar chord. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build this arpeggio to the left of that. So I'm gonna put my pinky on E, which is the seventh fret of the fifth string, and I'm gonna play seventh fret. On the next string, I'm gonna play sixth fret, and on the next string, I'm gonna play fourth fret. So pinky, third, and first. 
So right there I'm playing an E major chord, but I'm playing it to the left of this chord, of this fifth string bar chord. Okay, and you can hear the root, third, fifth. Now what's cool about what I'm showing you is no matter what chord you'd be on, you can do this exact same thing. If you were on A, find your A on your fifth string, and build to the left using pinky, third, first. If you want to do this over a D chord, build to the left, starting with your pinky, and you can do it. So it's movable. What we're learning is movable over any chord. Now we're dealing with major chords right now, not minor chords. We're dealing with major chords, okay? The next thing I want to do is I want to take that same idea and I want to build over the chord itself. So what I'm going to do is put my middle finger on E this time. Instead of my pinky, I'm putting my middle finger on there. And I'm going to play 7. On the next string, I'm going to play 6, just like before. Only different fingers this time. And then what I'm going to do is play 9th fret of the 4th string as well. So I have two notes on that 4th string. If we listen, it's the same notes just looks different. So this one is really nice when I want to play over the top of this chord. And then what I can do is learn how to play to the right of this chord too. I'm going to put my first finger on the 7th fret, which is E. This time I'm going to play the 11th fret of that same string, which is 5th string. And then go to my middle finger on the 9th fret. So listen to all three of these. See that? Same notes, just a different escape route, if you will, to do other things, which is what we have to get to, but we're not there yet. Okay, I can use any th all three of these to escape to different places. This one's going to escape off to this side. This is going to play over the top. This one's going to escape off to this side. And the beauty of learning this is, is you can do this over any chord and on any string, which we'll talk about in the guitar course. I don't want to get way too far off in the weeds with this, but... Uh, we talk about that in fretboard framework. But let's say again, I wanted to play over A on the sixth string. I could find a sixth string bar chord, and I could, because there's A right there. So I could play to the left, same shape, pinky, third, first, root, third, fifth, over the top, and to the right. Okay? Or if I want to play on the fifth string, like I just did, if I want to play on G, find G, play to the left over the top. So what's cool about that is you now could play these three triad ideas over any chord, any major chord, certainly on the sixth string and the fifth string. And like I said, we in fretboard framework, we'll go through all the strings and talk about this. But that's where I start, okay? Now, if I wanted to make this minor for any reason, a minor chord is very similar to a major chord like E major and E minor you'll notice there's only one note that's different. And the note that's different is the third. What happens when you want a minor or a sad sound, you have to take that major third, that third that we're playing, one, three, five, root third, fifth that we talked about, and you have to lower it down one note. So if I was playing E, those three shapes of E, if I wanted minor, I'd have to take the middle note of each one of those and lower it down one fret. And you can hear, so instead of playing seven, six, four, I'm playing seven, five, four. Here, instead of playing seven, six, nine, I'm playing seven, five, nine. And in here, instead of playing seven, 11, nine, I'm playing seven, 10, nine. And we can hear that minor sound, okay? Now again, don't panic if you don't really know all of that kind of stuff, because we'll talk about all of that in the course, okay? But just think about it, if you wanted a minor chord, you're taking that middle note, which is the third, and you're dropping it down one fret. If you know anything about your theory, what you're doing is you're taking your major third, which is the distance from the first note to the third note, and you're making it what we call a minor third. So in this case, E to G sharp would be a major third, E to G would be a minor third. And if you don't know what that is, it's okay. All right? So you could do that anywhere on the fretboard. As long as you know what your root is, you can generate a major or a minor arpeggio off of that, uh, any note you want on the fretboard, okay? Just understanding that, the difference between the major and the minor, okay? So now we're gonna take a little bit of a different direction because I wanna get you to these chords. 
So what I like to do oftentimes is I will make chords that are kind of in the same area of the fretboard. Because I always think of like E and D and A, or even if I did something like this, you know, E and D and A or something like that, they're kind of like moving around too much. Sometimes, not all the time. It depends on the situation. But if I've already got a guitar player that's playing this down here, let's say I'm playing with some other guitar player and they're playing these open chords, I have to think of something else. Like I'd like a different voicing to play maybe with them so we're not both just playing the same chord shapes all the time. So what I do is I start building out this idea of arpeggios. So let's say, for instance, I took this E major right here, the one to the left. Okay, right there. And then D major comes up, because that's the next chord of my sequence is E, D, A, E. Remember at the beginning I told you that, that backing track, which I'm going to play for you and hopefully give it to you, okay? Uh, but there's my E chord right there. So I want to find a D chord that's sitting in this same spot. Now, needless to say, I could play D by just moving down two frets, but I don't want to do that yet. I want to stay right here in this spot. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go to D here with my middle finger and play over the top. You see that? So now I'm playing a D major arpeggio, root, third, fifth. Over the top, where this one was going to the left, this one's going over the top, and they're both kind of sitting in that same spot right there. Now I have A coming up, so what do I wanna do with A? Well, for now, let's do this. Let's just do the sixth string. We're gonna to go to the sixth string and play over the top. And now we're still in that same spot. There's E. So I'm playing seven, six, four for E. And playing five, four, seven over the top for D. And then I'm gonna play five, four, seven again for A, but I gotta be on the sixth string this time. So they're all sitting right there. Now, it's not gonna sound very exciting yet. We still got some building to do, but let me show you what we've got. So here's our backing track. And it starts all over. E, D. Okay, so in a very basic way, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start use utilizing those three arpeggios. So let's put that to this. Okay. Now it is by no means exciting, but what it is doing is making a musical melodic connection to those chords. All right? That are being played. Now let's expand this though, and again, this is going to get, we're going to get into this way more in the course, but let me expand it for you, and if you can watch this later, you can always come back to it and, and keep learning this, but what I'm going to do is take that octave of E major that I'm playing right now, and I'm going to play it another octave, so I'm playing the root, third, fifth, and I'm going to play the next octave, which we learn in the course, so I'm going to play five, four, seven, which if you look at it, it looks like over the top. It's an over-the-top shape. So I'm playing a to-the-left shape that connects to an over-the-top shape. And again, I'm just playing those three notes in two octaves. Root, third, fifth, root, third, fifth. Okay? Then what we're going to do is we're going to go to the D chord here, which is over the top. There's our fifth string bar chord sitting right there. So I'm going to connect to that. So I'm going to play root, third, fifth, over the top. And then on the third string, I'm going to play seven, seven, and five, which is actually to the left, but because of the tuning of the guitar, it looks a little bit different, and again, we get into that in the course, but that's what we're doing. So I'm playing over the top, and then to the left. So the entire thing is uh, five, four, seven, 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 five, and you'll notice it winds up looking a lot like the fifth string bar chord. And if you make that connection, that's great. 
Okay, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the A chord. Now we've already played the root third fifth. So what I'm gonna do is on the next string, seventh fret, I'm gonna play to the left, which in this case is gonna look like seven, six, five. And if it looks a little different, again, it's explained in the chorus, but just follow me for now. And you can use your ear too. So I'm playing to the left. And then here, I have my last note, which is an A. One octave, or two octaves higher technically. But. And what I want you to see is that now what I've done is I've built three shapes that are all sitting in this one spot on the guitar. Here's uh, E. Here's D. Here's A. Now, if I was playing rhythm and somebody else was playing these chords down here, what I would do is think, well, what can I extract from these three chord shapes that I've got sitting right here? I've got an, an E chord sitting right there. So I could play all of that, sort of. I mean, I can't do, you know, my pinky can only be in one place at one time there, but I could pick a section of it, which I call fragmenting. Most guitar players do. So I'm going to pick a fragment of that and play it. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play, let's do, uh, let's go to the fourth, third, and uh, second string. So I'm going to play six, four, and five. That's going to be my E chord. As opposed to kind of this big, chunky six string thing, I'm just going to play, and maybe I slide into it or something like that, right? Give it a finger picking. Whatever I want to do with it, doesn't matter. And something like that. And it sounds quite a di bit different because it's very defined. There's only a few notes in this, right? We're only playing three strings. Okay, so that's going to be our E chord. It's coming from here, but it's sitting right here. Here comes D. Well, what are we going to do with D? Well, because I'm on these three string strings, what I'm going to do is move up, and I'm going to play 7-7-7, seven, 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 which is coming from there, okay? And then the A chord comes, I'm going to play 5-6-7, which is coming from right there. Now, it takes a little while to get used to this if you've never thought of this before. And again, you can do this all over the fretboard. If you wanted a higher voicing, we could come up here and play E and D, and A, I mean, we could do whatever we want, you know, so E, let's do E here, and then D here, and then A here, you know, we can do, again, don't worry about that, but we can do these all over the fretboard, that's the beauty of this. So now all of a sudden I've got this sound. Over somebody that's going sounds kind of cool or maybe I do some picking right and the more of this sort of thing we learn across the fretboard we don't just have to stay in this one spot we can expand this out There's just a ton of different cool things that we can do. So if that sort of makes sense, that's where your triads really come in handy for learning another alternative way of being able to see your fretboard. Okay? Now, if we move into the soloing aspect of this, and please remember, I think I already mentioned this, but um, there's a webinar discount and bonuses. If you check it out, if it's something that you're interested in, Please do that. Again, click on the link or the button or whatever it is you got here. See if it's something that you're interested in. But I guarantee if you've never really thought about this stuff before, it will massively get you out of just going when you play all the time. Okay? Learning to think about phrasing, learning to think about those chords, which is what triads are. Okay? So a uh, little bit more here. So the next thing I'm going to do, if I was going to solo over this, what I start thinking about is what are my tools? What parameters am I dealing with? What do I understand, right? 
And maybe you and I don't think the same way or don't understand the same things, and it's okay. Again, you could learn all of these things. So don't think I'm trying to confuse you, because I'm not. But if I wanted to solo, what I do need more than just arpeggios is I need a scale to connect to the, ar the arpeggios too, something that's very important. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this E major arpeggio. Sorry. Getting ahead of myself. I'm going to take that E major arpeggio, and what I'm going to do is connect a pentatonic scale to it, E major pentatonic. Now, if you know all your E major pentatonic positions, this is going to make perfect sense to you. If you don't, it might be a little bit above you, and it's okay. I just want to show you what your capabilities are. So if I play the pentatonic scale right here... You can see the pentatonic is sitting right where that arpeggio is sitting. So it takes this, this arpeggio right here and it adds in this note. And it adds in that note. So what happens now, as opposed to before, I don't just have a pentatonic scale that I'm going to roll up and down in, which I can do anytime I want. What's actually happening now is I'm seeing that triad kind of glowing. And then my pentatonic is sitting here, and so I can see a separation between the triad and between the notes of the pentatonic. And I can see that this note is a triad note. This note is not. This note is. This note is. This note is not. This note is. This note is not. This note is. Okay? So as I play, I can start using those other notes of the pentatonic as what I call push notes. They're notes that we can add in that add color, but they're not the notes that we necessarily want to try and emphasize. But they sound great because they're adding a fresh sound. Now again, someday when you get further along the line, you can do all kinds of things with emphasizing all kinds of different notes. But let's, again, not, instead of always trying to go for, well, what if, what if, what if, and then we don't develop, again, square one, right? We can't worry about square 13 until we develop square 1 and square 2 and square 3. We know square 13 exists, but if we don't develop these first squares, it's not going to make any difference anyway because we're just going to be lost. That's the thing you always have to remember. So as I'm visualizing this arpeggio, at any time, I can push into that note that is pentatonic, but it is not part of the triad, and that will create some tension that I can either leave or I can resolve by going back you see now that sounds more like music and I can use those as much as I want but notice how they it's like an, a piece of elastic that's going out and then it's coming back, right? Or a rubber band that's going out, it's coming back. If I play this, it comes back and I reconnect as opposed to like that kind of playing where there's no connection of anything. Like nothing sounds like, it, I always tell people, if you play everything you're, or if you emphasize everything, which means playing the, the entire scale all the time, you're emphasizing nothing. If you're, if you're just playing everything, nothing rises to the surface of importance. It all just sounds the same. If you start visualizing the, the, uh, the triad, it doesn't mean that's all you can play. What it does mean, though, is now you've targeted some key elements that you want to try and make your moves to. So as you push out, it wants to come back. It sounds more melodic when you do that okay so the next chord I've got coming up is D so I got to figure out what I'm gonna do with that well I know I just established that I'm gonna play that arpeggio right there so let's keep that arpeggio and let's keep the pentatonic around it Notice again how those notes push into the scale, or into the triad. So if I was playing over E, A 
comes up. Again, I've got this scale sitting here. But I got my A major arpeggio sitting there as well. Okay, so if I can visualize that scale along with those notes, I can create some really nice melodies. So watch what happens. I'm going to play very basic with this idea over this chord progression. Okay, I'm not going to try and play fast or anything, just real basic. Now, what I'm going to do is just expand this a little bit more by combining both the chord idea I showed you earlier and the motion that I'm doing right now, the chord fragments, if you will. So sometimes what I like to do is push into a chord fragment. So let's say, for instance, I did a chord fragment. I'm going to take this D or E major arpeggio. I'm going to play these two notes right here, four and four on the first and third strings. And then what I'm going to do when the D chord comes up, let's do, uh, let's do this. Again, any of this will work, but I'm going to do five and seven on the fourth and second strings. So I'm going from here to here. And that would also work for the A chord, because both of those notes fit in the A chord. So maybe I'll stay on those notes just so you can hear that. And then when the E chord comes up, I have to decide to do something. I could go back to where I was. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to drop down into 6 and 5. So 7 and 5 is going to become 6 and 5. Does that make sense? So E, D, uh, what I'm doing there is I'm playing, let's, that, and I'm going to keep it, I'm not going to do any sus stuff, I'm going to keep it very straight, so I'll play 7 and 7, so I'm playing part of that chord, I don't want to confuse you, and then A chord comes up, I'm going to play 7 and 5, which is part of the A chord, and then the E chord comes back up, I'm going to go to 6 and 5, right there, okay, so listen to how that sounds, just watch this. You can see how that could function both as a chordal thing and as a soloing thing. Now I'm going to take that even further into the soloing stratosphere by playing more notes of that pentatonic. Okay, around those notes of the uh, chord fragment. Here we go. All of a sudden it starts sounding a lot like real music which is pretty darn cool 
So the trick with fretboard framework is to get you to, see, to first understand what arpeggios are and how to visualize them across your fretboard. And then how to be able to visualize them cross-referencing each other to each other. And then finally being able to add scales and things around that. Because right now we're just using pentatonic, right? But we could, we could break out of that and start doing some diatonic things too if you understood you know, diatonic scales and things like that, because you might be watching this going, hey, isn't uh, E, D, and A technically E mixolydian? And it is. The difference is, is you're noticing, I'm not just going like that. Again, there's nothing wrong with doing that once in a while in a lick or something like that, but you can't do that the whole time. So the trick here is, is that as I'm playing, I have all of that at my disposal. I can play something that connects to E. D wherever I want across the guitar. a ton of really great stuff by combining all these together. So this, this fretboard framework isn't about not playing scales or not playing modes or not playing whatever. It's an addition to that to get you to think about your fretboard a little bit differently. Now, um, I want to make sure, I, I have a quick video that I want to show you. Um, I got to switch to it here in just a second. Hopefully that'll work. Um, that talks about fretboard framework to see if it's something that is good for you and um, if it's something you're interested in. So let me figure out how to do that here, and then we'll play that for you. If you want to play songs across the entire fretboard, or play solos over different styles of music that people will love because they sound great and look effortless, and ultimately have more fun playing guitar and have the confidence to jam with fellow musicians, then you're going to want to pay very close attention to this message. Because you're about to discover a simple way to play songs and solos across the fretboard that sounds amazing and looks so effortless that people's jaws will drop because they can't believe how well you're playing without spending hours of your time learning confusing music theory. My name is Steve Stein and I'm a guitar player just like you. I've always known the fretboard was a big deal, but it was kind of overwhelming. I've been teaching guitar since 1987 and I just turned 51. Maybe it's my age or something, but I never really got how some people can learn the fretboard by memorizing diagrams. And I've tried all kinds of stuff like I'm sure you have, and it sure has been frustrating. Like spending hours with my nose stuck in a book packed with hundreds of fretboard diagrams. Or listening to someone who's practically speaking a different language trying to explain exactly what I need to know in a way that I understand it. After spending all that time and money, it never really clicked and it felt like one critical piece of the puzzle was missing. Plus, I've never felt comfortable trusting that I understand or know how to do something without applying it in the real world. I thought there surely must be something easy that helps you to play songs and solos without having to worry about learning every chord and scale. That's when I dug through all my notes and discovered a shocking fact. You don't need to know every chord or how to play all the modes to play the most popular rock, pop, country, metal, or blues songs. You don't need to know how to thread all the scales together to play solos. I realized that you just really need to know triads. A triad is three notes that make up prime chords like major, minor, and diminished. When you can see those three types of triads on your fretboard, you'll play songs faster than ever before. And you can easily combine them to create solos. Triads are kind of like landmarks on a map. I use them to get from point A to point B on the fretboard, and I know when I play them, they'll sound great. Because they're part of the chord and work in any key. When I learned triads, my guitar playing improved tremendously because I always knew where to go. I never got lost and wasn't playing the same old scales over and over again. After a while, I started sharing this with some of my private students. They started getting results too. So I decided to record my exact method and show how anyone can use triads to play songs and solos across the fretboard that sound amazing and feel effortless. And that's how my new course, Fretboard Framework, was created. Here's what you're going to discover. Simple triad patterns that spread out over the entire fretboard so you'll know exactly where to put your fingers. Lots of guitar players seem like they're spending hours practicing boring drills and memorizing every single scale pattern. The good news is you don't have to do that because there are only three types of triads you ever have to learn to play the majority of popular songs and play awesome solos too. 
This two-hour course is completely online and broken down into short, easy-to-digest videos where I show you exactly how to use triads to play songs and solos across the fretboard. The first few videos explain exactly what a triad is and demonstrate how the three main types of triads, major, minor, and diminished, allow you to play creative harmonies and melodies. They're also powerful for playing songs because you'll learn new voicings so you won't be stuck playing big, blocky chords and your guitar playing will sound more interesting. You can even use triad arpeggios in your solos to create melodic lines that don't sound like you're just playing a boring scale. I show you where the triads are across the fretboard so you'll know exactly where to put your fingers. In the last half of the course, I show you how to unlock the fretboard with the cage system and how to apply everything you learn to play over some jam tracks. This will allow you to really wire triads into your guitar playing and help you see the fretboard in a whole new way. You get lifetime access to my fretboard framework course so you can go at your own pace, watch the videos again and again until you're ready for more. The videos are short and easy to understand so you never get bogged down with a bunch of useless information that won't improve your guitar playing. Similar good courses cost hundreds of dollars or even a thousand dollars at Berklee College of Music Online. Or you can do like I did and spend thousands of dollars in college learning what I'm going to show you. With all that said, this could easily sell for a thousand dollars. After all, similar courses sell for $14.97. Of course, it won't cost you a thousand dollars, not even five hundred dollars, not even a hundred dollars. You get the complete fretboard framework course for just three payments of $27.60. Or you can save 70% if you want to make one payment of $69. But it gets better because when you order today, you also get two exclusive live sessions where you can ask me your most burning questions about the course. And you don't have to worry about making it because they'll be recorded and uploaded so you can watch them at any time in the members area. Another one of the most important skills you can develop as a guitar player is ear training. That's why I've included my Ear Training 2.0 course as a special second bonus. You'll learn the secrets of playing songs by ear and be able to listen to songs and instantly know what notes will sound great for your solos. If you were to buy this on the website a few months back, it would have cost you $99, but you get it free when you order today. And if you order in the next 15 minutes, you'll get my three and a half hour essential guitar skills course that originally sold for $99. You'll discover all the skills you need to be a well-rounded lead guitar player. This will allow you to play freely across the entire fretboard and get really creative when it comes time to solo. With this course, you're going to overcome problems like not knowing where to start and end your solos, worrying about what scale will sound good for leads, and alternative scales you can use to improvise better solos than you ever thought possible. You won't have to worry about feeling lost or confused because your fingers will be trained to instantly find the right notes without any hesitation. So to recap, you get my new fretboard framework course and all the great bonuses I just mentioned for just three payments of $27.60 or one payment of $69. And you're protected by our 30 day guarantee. Truly put it to the test for a full 30 days and see if it's right for you. If you don't think it's a good fit, no big deal. Just contact our friendly support team and they'll issue you a full refund or exchange. No questions asked, no receipt required. However, I can only offer this price and bonuses for a short time. After that, the price increases to $199 and the bonuses will not be included. So click the button below and get started today. As soon as you place your order, you'll get a receipt in your email with instructions on how to access the course. You'll also get a spot in the two live sessions and immediate access to the Ear Training 2.0 and Essential Guitar Scales bonus courses. If you want a simple way to play songs and solos across the fretboard that sounds amazing and looks so effortless that people can't believe how well you're playing without spending hours of your time learning confusing fretboard diagrams, then you're absolutely going to love fretboard framework. And it's simple to get started. You log into the course and watch the first short video, and as you build your skills, you move to the next video, always at your own pace. You can watch and repeat lessons as many times as you need. Remember, this could easily sell for $1,000, but you can have it today for three payments of $27.60 or one payment of $69. And when you order, you'll also get the two live sessions and immediate access to my Ear Training 2.0 and Essential Guitar Scales courses. You'll learn the secrets of playing songs by ear and all the scales you need to improvise solos over any song. The bonuses alone have a $438 value and you get our 30 day guarantee. But remember, I can only offer this price and bonuses for a short time. After that, the price increases to $199 and the bonuses won't be included. So click the button below and get started today. Okay, so hopefully that helped you a little bit. And uh, so it's pretty cool. I mean, I love this kind of stuff. So. In my mindset, what I can think about is playing more of a scalular idea and then going into more of a phrasing idea. I love to start off with phrasing ideas, and then I move into 
licks or patterns or whatever it is I might be doing. But the beauty of this is, is no matter where you go on the guitar, you can always be thinking, okay, so E, and here comes D, A, to E, and then D comes up. comes up, back to E, you see, there's just a ton of really great things that you can learn how to do. So hopefully this has helped you a little bit and not confused you because there's just a lot to do and not a lot of time to do it. Um, so thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for giving me your time. Uh, hopefully this has helped you a little bit, maybe inspired you a little bit. Uh, give you some ideas of things that you could practice. And please check out the course and see if it's something that you might be interested in. So take care, stay positive, and I'll talk to you soon.